Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to install a Shimano GRX 810 rear derailleur to your bike. So I'll go ahead, I'll run through the steps. Right, so here we have the derailleur. So I'll just point out a few things on it before we get started. Now, being as this is a clutch derailleur, you've got the clutch lever there on and off. Make sure that the lever is set to off before you start fitting it. So then you've got your adjustment screws. So I'll point these out now while it's off the bike so you can see them easy. You've got the low screw at the bottom there and then the high screw at the top. The B screw there or the final adjustment screw there. Two millimeter hex heads, all of those. Three. Then you've got your cable pinch bolt there which is a 4mm hex head and you've got your actual mounting bolt to put onto your derailleur hanger there which is a 5mm hex head just there then so your cable will go in here and out through there so make sure that that if you're fitting one um, used just make sure that the barrel adjuster is turned all the way into the bottom and then just out um, a couple of clicks from the bottom so back up a couple of clicks so that's the actual derailleur now if you're purchasing one new and it comes in the box it comes with a length of outer cable as you can see there now if you've got to cut this cable down to length when you put it on your frame you might have to you might not you want to cut it from this end with the plastic stop on it not the one with the metal stop because if you cut it down this end there's a plastic goes up inside the cable the outer cable there there's a piece of plastic inside it there's a sheath inside there and it goes all the way up inside the, the outer so if you cut that down then as you can see there the end of it you'll snip that off the opposite end doesn't have it as you can see so always cut it down from this end if you need to trim it to length right so let's get this on the bike so you've got your 5mm hex head there to screw it on make sure you just put a bit of anti-seize or grease on the threads before you screw it in just help it stop getting seized on there a later date and then what you're aiming for is the notch on the bottom there of your hanger what you want to do is make sure that that's hitting against the notch there sticking out make sure those two are making contact with each other at all times so when you're screwing it in have a look and make sure that they're touching as you're screwing it in so you can start it off screwing it in and then just make sure they're actually making contact so you can just push down there and just make sure so it's touching as you screw it up like so so once you've got that tightened down and it's actually touching it because it's easy as you tighten it up it's easy for them to move away from one another so there's a gap you don't want any gap they've got to be touching so once you're happy with that you can just go ahead and torque the bolt up seven newton meters on that and ready for the next step right so the next step is after mounting it on to the frame is you want to locate your high screw with two millimeter hex head so your high screw is the top one there and what you want to do then is we're looking at the guide jockey wheel there the top one the bottom guide wheel is just by my hand there so the top one there and what you want to do is bring that over so as it's in line with the outer edge of the teeth on the 11 tooth on the back so at the minute it's in line with the second one in so that's no good so if you just locate your high screw there and if you turn it we'll see clockwise we'll move it over that way so you want to go anti-clockwise and then get it in line with the outer edge 
of the teeth on the 11 tooth. Right, so now we can go ahead and do the low screw, which is this one here, 2mm again. So what you want to do then, to set that, is push across on the dralia, like so, and move it over, and you want it so, again, the top guide wheel there is directly underneath the largest cog at the back, if you've got 32, 34, whatever you've got on the back. So if you hold it over there in that position, and then locate your low screw there. So if you turn it anti-clockwise, that will move it over that way towards the largest. So if you want to, yours is say under the second one in at the moment when you get it, you want to move it across, then anti-clockwise and move it across that way, and then clockwise and bring it back the opposite way. So once you got it set directly underneath then that's the adjustment made to so move on to the next step right so as you can see we've got a full length cable in a new one so make sure you've either got a brand new cable or your cables in perfect working order otherwise you won't get good shifting if the cables all worn so what you want to do is get your outer cable slide that over your inner there, put it in onto your frame, make sure it's in the frame properly. Obviously if you have to cut its length, you've got to cut it to length, so size it up. To do that you just want to hold the drailier like that against the stop, and then you can size up if you need to cut it, make sure it's got a nice clean loop coming round and it's going straight in to the barrel adjuster if you need to cut it down. And also, before we hook the cable up, make sure that your shifter is shifted down to the 11 at the back. Before you hook the cable up, make sure it's definitely sw switched down to the 11, the smallest at the back. So you just go ahead, put your cable through your barrel adjuster and out, like so. And then it's a 4mm hex head. So you can just slacken off your pinch bolt so you've got enough room to put the cable through and out the other side. So you just get that through like so. Get that in position. So once you've got the cable in, I'll just uh, show you the best way to pinch that up. Right, so we've got the cable through the pinch bolt, so what you want to do then is pull it towards the front of the bike. So you're pulling it down the chain stay, in effect. So when you're pulling on it tight, then you can snug up your pinch bolt making sure that the washer is making contact with the cable and it's in the right place so you can just snug that down and pinch it up so tighten that down that's the cable installed right so now we've got the cable installed we're just going to run up through the gears just to check we've got all the available gears run up and then back down again so I'll just do that So as you can see there, we've got all the available gears, so you can do that a few times, run up and down them a handful of times, just to bed the cable in. Now once we've done that, what we'll do is, we'll go ahead and just see if we've got the gears roughly right before we put a chain on there. You can almost get it spot on without even using a chain on the bike. So I'll try and show it the best I can on the camera for you so you know what to do. Right, so if you're looking directly down on top of the cassette, or you can look 
directly from behind as well. But if you look directly down, I'll try and show it on the camera the best I can, you can see that the top guide wheel is there, like so. So you can see that it's in line with the 11 because that's where you set it with the screw earlier. Now you want to do is click up through your gears and then make sure that that guide wheel, as you click up to the next one, next one, the next one, just make sure that it's in line with each cog. So as you, all you've got to do is go up to your shifter and then shift across. It's hard to see on here, but you get the gist of it. You just shift over and make sure that it's in line. Now, if it looks like it's slightly out as you're getting up the cassette, then you just may need to make a tweak anti-clockwise on your barrel adjuster, just a few clicks at a time, and you'll see that it just brings it in line with, say if you're four up there, four cog up, and it looks it's slightly out of line. If you just give it a few clicks anti-clockwise, it will bring it back in line with that cog. So if you just look in down there as you're doing it and just get it roughly so it's set right so when you're set all the way across just look from the back and see if it's in line with the largest at the back as well when you clicked right over so once you're happy with that then we can get the chain on and see if we was anywhere near it Right, so what I've done is, I've just put the cable up out of the way, the inner cable here, and just taped it onto the outer there to stop the cable going into your spokes, because we don't want to cut the cable yet until we're 100% happy with it. So, what I'll do is, I'll go ahead and refit the chain. And then we can see if we was anywhere near on the... Uh, on the adjustments without the chain on there. So I'll go ahead and get this chain on. And I'll just start, obviously we're shifted down to the bottom, so I'll start on the lowest, the 11 tooth. So just get the chain in position, and I'll do this with the with the camera rolling all the time, so you can see that there's no need to have a chain on there to set it up. I'll just put the chain on, it saves having the chain in the way, the tension when you're trying to set it up. So that's on there now, so what I'll do is I'll just run up through the gears and see if we was anywhere near. Right, so now I've shifted up to the largest at the back, so whatever you've got on there. What I'm going to do now is set the B screw, so that's the, or the final adjustment screw, which is the one just there. So what you want to do, it's a 2 mil hex head. All that's doing is adjusting the gap between the largest cog at the back and the guide wheel, allowing enough room for the chain to pass through cleanly without getting fouled up. So you want about a 7mm gap, and as it comes off of the cog at the back, it's got to go cleanly onto the guide wheel. So there's no point having it right down here somewhere, not exaggerated like that, because obviously you can tell the gap is nowhere, it's way too big here. You've got to have it like that, so the chain's coming nicely off the cassette, and then onto the guide wheel. So to adjust that, if yours needs adjusting, just go to your B screw or final adjustment screw there. If you turn that clockwise, it opens the gap up. So I just exaggerate, it pulls the gap down like that. And then anti-clockwise, 
it tightens the gap up as you can see like so. so like I said you want a nice clean line of the chain exit in off of the largest there onto the guide wheel like so right so there you go up and down no problems at all now if yours was slightly out of adjustment and you put the chain on there and you weren't happy it was skipping in some of the gears as you went up the cassette it wasn't shifting crisply or it was, it was getting hung up and it was halfway in between say one gear and another then what you want to do is go to your barrel adjuster if that happens and stick on the gear there shift up a few gears whichever one was playing up just get it until it changes crisply or it's not making a noise when you're pedaling so you just buy it or in your barrel adjuster anti-clockwise just a few clicks whilst you're pedaling then you can eliminate that if yours was making a noise anywhere on the cassette or you was having trouble getting any of the gears all I'll do is I'll turn the barrel adjuster back again and then we'll try it then so I'll just unadjust it and as you can see there already I've done three changes but it's only changed up one so it's out of adjustment just with those few clicks on the barrel adjuster and like you see there because the barrel adjuster is not adjusted correctly and the gears are out of line because I went up one and I went up well I went up three gears and it only went up two so now I'm at the top on the shift lever but it hasn't made it to the largest at the back and that's just me adjusting that wrongly by a few clicks that's all I did so if I stick or stay on there and all I'll do is if I turn that anti-clockwise a few turns or a few clicks now I'll try it, and because I'm already shifted up there, as you can see there, it's trying to go up, but it's not quite right. So you just do a few more clicks on your adjuster, anti-clockwise, and there you go. That's it up on the top, like that. So it's only a few clicks that you could be out on your adjuster it makes all the difference so that's the actual derailleur installed now you've got to run up and down your gears a handful of times and also change up to the outer at the front largest chain ring and then try them again a few times just to make sure that you're happy right so once you're 100 percent happy with everything then what you want to do is get your cable and then cut it to length so when you cut it just leave about 20 millimeters sticking out from the by the pinch bolt there and cut it off and then you can crimp on your end stop right so I'll just uh, cut the cable to length like so and then we we'll just put an end stop on it just stop it uh, fraying the cable just pop one on there and you can just crimp it in place like so right so there's the steps complete for you so hope you found the video helpful if you did remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content till next one ride safe and I'll see you then